I'm 17, I'm sitting in my school library reading a book and I hear someone calling me from a few tables away. They're asking me what book I'm reading but before I'm able to answer, something suddenly clicks in my head. I realise that this was the girl that I liked. I'm reading How to Win Friends and Influence People and when I showed her the cover of the book, she probably said the worst thing she could have. She asked me, did you really need a whole book to learn how to make friends? And bear in mind, we are a few tables away from each other and she said this in a way that the whole library can hear her. So now I'm sitting here embarrassed, thinking of something witty to say, like how can I play this off? Because let's be real, saying I'm reading How to Win Friends and Influence People, it's not exactly the sexiest thing to be reading in front of your crush. I I realized something and I said this out loud to her. You realize that the only reason I know you is because I've implemented this book. In fact, this is my second time reading it. I met her a few weeks ago and clearly this shit works. Like just a year ago, I was known as the kid that would be on his phone at a family function just sitting in the corner. But now I've got a social circle where I consider them like close friends. And when I have people asking me, how did you like make that change? Saying that I read a book about making friends, it really isn't the sexy answer. I made the most progress in my social life when I did what nobody else wanted to do. I learned what social skills were and then I implemented it in my own life. And in the same way, when you see video editors trying to maximize their attention and get better editing, they forget the one thing that would make them the most progress in this area. Arguably the most important part of retention it's your pacing. For sure having a crazy editing style or being able to use these sound design things, sure they're important but none of it matters if you mess up this fundamental of pacing. Forget about the algorithm, you're editing for people and people they're just like me and you, we're humans, we're social creatures and when someone realizes that oh this creator isn't talking normally, they're adding in weird pauses, they're not speaking like in the right speed and they're adding an awkward pause here in their speech, that's literally the signs of a cycle and of course viewers aren't gonna like say that out loud but their brains have been evolving for like thousands of years and they're gonna pick up on this subconsciously and that's what makes someone click off it's these awkward timings that just don't feel right and as an editor it's your job to make sure that doesn't happen because you have full control over the pacing of that video my name is malice and i hope video editors turn their hobby into a full-time income and in this video i'm gonna be showing you exactly how to use pacing to get better retention in your videos i've broken this video down into three sections. We've got redefining pacing, using waveforms and using emotive cutting. By the end of this video you're literally gonna know how to create emotion through just cuts and when you layer that on top of your other skills just imagine how good that looks in front of a creator. But before we do any of that we need to actually redefine pacing because a lot of editors or like people on Twitter and stuff you see them just like throw around buzzwords. You hear like oh maximize retention, this one storytelling trick. You hear all these things but we don't even know what any of it means and none of it matters. You're not gonna be able to implement it until you actually figure out how the hell do I actually use this information for myself. And some of you might want to skip this section but I promise you this is going to be worth the two minutes you spend to watch this because I haven't seen anyone else explain pacing like this. Most newer editors hear pacing and they think it's just how fast the video is at a certain point but the thing is there's a lot more that goes into it. Pacing isn't how fast the video is. In fact it's not even how fast that section of the video is. Pacing is literally how fast every every single cut is. It's the difference between one cut to the next. It's literally the relation in between two cuts that are next to each other. That's what makes them so powerful. Like a good way to visualize this is imagine you have a small piece of chocolate and you're choosing which meal to have it after. You could have it after a savory meal, so something like oats compared to something that's sweet. So you have a piece of chocolate after having dessert. In which scenario is the piece of chocolate gonna taste sweeter? It's not the piece of chocolate that's changed. It's the meal that you had beforehand. And in the same way, having a slow emotional section of a video, it only works because the part before that was completely different in emotion. Pacing is the dance between these faster and slower sections and how they interact with each other to like literally spike a viewer's emotions up and down. And in the upcoming sections, I'm going to show you literally on a frame perfect level how to get that sort of effect on a viewer. Because being just two, three, four frames off a single cut, that's literally the difference between an audience laughing their asses off and you ruining the entire video. So the first cut I want to teach you, I like to call it the basic attack. The reason being, most of the cuts in your video, they're actually just going to be like where there's not much space in between. In fact, there's literally no dead space in between the lines. And while this is the most common cut that you're going to be making, most editors get this wrong and it means when they do get onto the emotive sections where they're adding pauses intentionally, they don't even hit. 
So going into these actionable steps, I'm going to be referring to things as the head and the tail of a clip. The head being on a waveform when you can see the audio starts going up and then the tail being at the end of a clip when the audio kind of just fades out. That's what I call the tail. So it kind of looks like a tail. That's why I call it that. And when you're cutting, I want you to do this thing called cutting close to the head. Because when it comes to pacing, this is one thing that would genuinely change so much with your editing. Zoom in as close as you can to a clip when you're cutting it. And when you're cutting the first half of it zoom in and make sure that it's literally like frame perfect when it starts the audio because you might not realize it but when someone sees a clip and it starts off with silence and then suddenly they just start speaking it's like it's really awkward to watch as a viewer so make sure you're cutting off as much as you can close to the head of the clip just make sure there's no silence before it starts talking and with the tail of the first clip so the bit of the waveform that kind of levels off i want you to start becoming more comfortable with just cutting a little bit of that off because a lot of the time you'll realize that tail it's not necessary to be there it's just like some long reverb or audio that just doesn't need to stay in the car and you can experiment with this so try cutting off a little more listen back to it and if it sounds all awkward add a bit more back if it still sounds like you can try taking off a little bit more one or two frames try it out and see if it works because a lot of the time you can cut off a lot more and have it still sound natural than a lot of people think but when you are using this technique you're going to run into this problem where there's like a pop in between the audio clips and it doesn't take long to fix this we're just going to use a small crossfade in between there if you want to use the exact like shortcut so i just do it in one click and you'll find that twitter video below it's really worth experimenting now and spending that time to see oh will it be a better a frame extra or a frame less it's worth it because after a while it ends up becoming second nature to you because nobody else is everyone else is doing like these mediocre just if it looks half decent if it sounds all right then i'll leave it in but when you're the editor that's able to go in and check its frame perfect and listen back to it and just use these techniques that's what puts you ahead of everyone else so now that you've learned that we're going to move on to the last section which is more about emotive cutting now you already might know that you can use extra pauses to make it feel more emotive make it sad to make it like feel awkward even you can use pauses for effect but if you don't know how to do it on like a frame by frame level i promise you're losing out on so much like emotional value with your videos but when you are adding these in i want you to keep one phrase in your head i want you to keep the tail shave the head what that means is when you are adding extra time extra frames into your clips add it to the first clip not the second one so on the second clip where you see the head keep that cut shaved nice and close to the audio because like i said it's really awkward when you're just staring at a like creator like they're still and then suddenly they explode into motion just trust me keep the tail shave the head and this same concept applies to pretty much any type of content it doesn't matter if it's a talking head video it doesn't matter if it's a gaming video it doesn't matter if it's like a finance video these are all basic concepts that you need to understand because it's just basic like communication like you wouldn't be in a conversation with someone iro where they're literally sitting there still and then suddenly they explode into loads of motion that's what you're doing when you add too much space at the head of the clip like even those these pauses that we're adding they're not like seconds long it's literally on a frame by frame basis but it's still noticeable on like a subconscious level to your audience and you might be asking now how do you actually know how much pause to add or like where do you know to add it and honestly the best way that i found for this is by referencing other youtubers watch these high level guys and notice when they're adding pauses to make a scene seem more emotional notice when they add no pause to speed up the video notice when they leave in a whole breath just to make the video feel more authentic because by learning from other people these guys have done it already and now you're able to learn from them don't reinvent the wheel learn from these guys reference it and now you know the technical side of how they're doing it because sure you can learn this on your own like i spent literally three years learning about all this stuff so i can teach it to you you could technically learn the same thing in the same amount of time but why would you when you have all of these resources of people teaching you like there's other youtubers that you can look at their pacing and be like okay he uses this type of pacing let me take inspiration from that and when you do this with enough people and you keep learning these things that's when you start associating with them and creators look at you and you're another person that they're considering to hire because when you're able to create emotion through your editing you move up the ranks in a creator's eyes and let's be real the only reason you're watching 
watching a video like this because you see potential in editing. You know that this is something you like to do anyways and you'd like to make like decent money from it. It's like it's the best of both worlds isn't it? And if you fit that sort of description then that's what my content is for. It's like I just want to help people that were in a similar situation to me a few years ago because I say this all the time like I genuinely feel I got lucky like I got dealt a really lucky hand in the sense that I got into editing as a hobby and sometimes I think like I'm 18 right now I see all of my other friends working normal jobs applying to jobs and like working like eight hours a day already at 18 and I'm here sitting at home working on YouTube videos and just like editing something I used to do as a hobby and I'm getting paid for it like five ten times more than everyone else my age and I don't want this to seem like an ego thing because it's genuinely not I I see this as I got lucky that I got started as a hobby and I just scaled it up if you're editing as a hobby right now I promise you don't know how lucky you are if you take the right steps now you already have done the hard part of learning like editing like simple editing getting into the editing space that's hard enough now you just need to take the right steps to start moving up the ranks if you are an editor like that who genuinely thinks he could do so much more with editing like you've started off already but you want to take it to a level that you see these top one percent editors doing then you're someone that i want to watch my content i'll be so real i don't really give a shit about becoming huge i just want to have a small community where we actually have a hobby of editing and we want to scale it up into a full-time income because it's like why wouldn't you and even past like the monetary side because money is like oh money is evil shit like that yeah but even past the money what i've realized is the stuff that we're doing here us helping other editors turn this into a proper income source it's so much bigger than just a couple thousand bucks by us teaching editors how to turn their hobby into a full-time income we're literally improving their lives like i got in a call with someone recently and he was just speaking about how he went from 300 a month to over 4,000. that was within three months of me teaching him what to do but bigger than that bigger than the money he made the one thing that he told me that really hit and made me realize how important all of this is he told me that he was finally able to buy his mum a birthday gift. He bought her a perfume. I don't know why it's like him saying that last year he wasn't able to buy her that and this year he was and it was because of editing. That was kind of when I realised like the shit we're teaching now, the movement, the, the effort we're putting into editing, it's bigger than just being an editor. You're genuinely changing your life and the lives around you for the better and you're finally seeing the potential that you have.